Hey Retro fans, welcome to episode 13 of Retro Gaming Memories. In this episode I'm going to talk about some of my favourite Xbox games, my the original Xbox. Um, now there will be a video coming up soon about memories of the Xbox, but I thought I would just do a sort of... I was going to do a top 10, uh, I've got a pile of games just off camera here. I was going to do a sort of top 10, but I thought I'll just talk about some of my favourite games uh, on the system rather than a sort of top 10, putting them in order and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, we'll just dive straight in. Um, the first game I wanted to show you was Amped. I'll just cover my face with it. Yeah, <laughs> Amped. Um, snowboarding game. Now, <clears throat> I got that pretty much at launch just after. It was one of the first games I bought with the Xbox, for the Xbox after I got it. Um, and... I'm not really a sports kind of guy, and um, but some things I do, I do kind of like having a little go of. <clears throat> and amped, uh, kind of tick the boxes. My my boys at the time had got uh, my kids had got a, a GameCube for Christmas, and they had uh, it wasn't a 1080, but I can't remember. There was a a snowboarding game they had, and it was pretty good fun. But it was a kind of comic style kind of you know it, it wasn't sort of realistic it was a sort of cartoon style game um <clears throat> and i enjoyed playing it and i thought you know when i saw amped i think it was one of these things that was on sale it was like a tenner or something like that and uh and i thought you know what it looks pretty good um we'll give it a go and the the, the cool thing is is that because of the xbox functionality because you could rip your own discs your own cds to it and have your own soundtracks um, the soundtrack with Amped was pretty good, it was all kind of indie rock stuff. But being able to kind of have your own soundtrack uh, was, was really cool. You know, snowboarding down the hills to Green Day and, and Metallica and whatever else, <laughs> or, or Joe Satriani and stuff like that, was, was cracking, it was great fun. Um, I've never mastered it, you know, it's one of these games that I dip in and I play. I've never kind of completed the career mode or anything like that. But it is quite cool, the challenges, you have to do like tricks and if you get kind of, once you've played a, through a couple of levels, you get um, people sponsoring you um, and then you get sort of pro photographers asking you to do tricks for them and you have to kind of pull off stuff in front of them, little challenges and that. So it's, it's pretty cool, there's, there's sort of multi-levels of play to it um, and it looks really nice, you know, for a sort of original Xbox game um, and it's an Xbox exclusive as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a cracking game. You can pick it up for, for pennies now. So if you fancy giving it a go, I would thoroughly recommend it. Okay. The next game, and I don't know how well this will show up on camera, is Doom 3. Uh, this is the steel, steel box edition. Uh, the sort of limited edition thing. This has got, uh, yeah, the, the original Ultimate Doom and Doom 2. Um, that you can play on Xbox Live and all that kind of stuff. So it was quite nice to, to have Doom 3 as well as the originals, um, you know, on, on the system. Doom 3, my god. Um, the original Doom games were were great fun. I don't think that they were scary. Um, you know, the, the character design in that and them was great. Everybody knows Doom, I don't need to tell you about it. Doom 3, holy cow. Um... I think I've maybe played about an hour of it and I have to play it in bright daylight pretty much with the sound off because you need to wear a nappy when you're wear, when you're playing it. It is terrifying. Um, the fact that you can... You know, it's a first person shooter. If you've never seen Doom 3 then you must have lived on another planet or something. But it's, it's a first person shooter. Um, but the thing about Doom 3 is that it's pretty much pitch black. Um, <clears throat> so you have a torch instead of a gun. Um, now you can swap, obviously, you have guns, you can swap between them, but you can't have them both at the same time. I think there was a hack later on or a cheat that let you have both, but certainly if you play the game sort of out the box, you have the torch to let you see, and then you have to quickly flick to your gun to shoot stuff, but it just makes it so tense and terrifying, Jesus. So much so that my uh, kind of older boy was playing this, um, and he's terrified of nothing, um, and he 
couldn't really play it. There's only two games I've ever seen him doing that way. That and uh, what was the other one? Is it PsyOps, I think it was called? Can't remember. No, I don't think I don't think that was it. Anyway, there was a PlayStation 2 game, a sort of horror game that just freaked him out. So it must be bad. Um, but Doom 3, great game. The original Xbox port is fantastic. It looks really nice, sounds brilliant. Um, they remastered it for the Xbox 360. But, you know, I've not played the 360 version. Don't really need to. The, the, the original Xbox version looks great. So, thoroughly recommend picking that up. And especially the Steelbox if you get Doom 2 and all that kind of stuff. And Ultimate Doom, which is great. <clears throat> the next one is... Uh, the third in the series, it's not the original one, um, and it's Burnout 3. I'll try and get that through glare. Um, <clears throat> I had played the original Burnout on the GameCube, and, and it, it was pretty fun. It was a bit different to, to the normal racing stuff, but I can't remember why I, I saw Burnout 3. I, I, I can't remember if I saw videos of it or something, and I just thought that looks amazing. And when I bought it, it was one of these games, there's so much in it, It was I think Burnout 3 was the first one that had the sort of crash mode where you, you had, um, you basically had a challenge, you had to drive really fast down a street and then kind of cause as much mayhem as you could at a sort of T-junction at the end where there was traffic, you had to kind of crash into stuff and steer your car into things and blow up all sorts of stuff and cause the most amount of sort of damage or collateral damage or whatever. So that was great fun, and the actual game itself, holy cow, it's it's the fastest, at the time it was the fastest I'd ever seen anything moving on any system, it was so fast, it was ridiculous, but at the same time, it wasn't twitchy, you, you felt as if you had control, you know, your car responded exactly to, to how you were steering it, so, you know, if you had the reactions, you could fly down that thing, boosting at full speed, weaving in and out of traffic, nudging them into stuff, and you know, getting takedown cams and all that kind of stuff. But being able to nudge people into, into walls and watch the cars flip over your head and, you know, getting the slow motion cameras and then... It was, there's so many good things in that game, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's just brilliant, brilliant fun. Um, and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. I do have all the other games in the Burnout series, um, right up to current gen. Um... And it's it's a great series. I, I love it. And each one, although kind of the, the later series after Burnout Three, they started just doing kind of variations on a theme. But Burnout One, Burnout Two is totally different, or really different to Burnout One. Burnout Three adds even more on top of that. So up to kind of Burnout Three, there was a real kind of progression in the series. And then then it started kind of getting variations on a theme. But <clears throat> at the same time, uh, I would totally totally recommend it. And if you don't have any of them. I would jump straight into Burnout 3 because it's awesome. Okay, another first person shooter here. Um, this game was absolutely awesome. It's black. Um, if you like first person shooters and you've never played this, stop this video immediately, go and find this and buy it and play it loud. Put Make it really loud. Black looks fantastic. Um, the Xbox port is amazing. The PS2 version looks really nice as well. I don't think it looks as nice as the, the, the Xbox version, but um, a brilliant, brilliant first-person shooter. Looks really good. Um, some people have said that the, the kind of story mode and that, that it's quite shallow, but you know it's got enough running about, shooting stuff, um, destructible environments, and all that kind of thing. Loads of different guns, and the guns react differently. Um, you know, they, they kind of. It was one of the first games that paid attention to sort of gun physics, for want of a better term. Um, you know, Battlefield on the Xbox 360 got lots of plaudits for how guns reacted differently and sounded different. Black did it first. Um, each gun sounds different um, and it handles differently, uh, and it's it, it puts a, a kind of new element into the game, and it's it's really satisfying. <laughs> Um, and there's mad things like the soldiers that you, that you're fighting against. Um, they have they have helmets on, and you can shoot the helmet and it pings off and stuff like that. But without wanting to sound like a total psycho, it's really satisfying. Bullets kind of thud into things, um, and I'm not a violent guy at all. But I love my first person shooters, 
and black is just astounding and the guns sound really nice and the environments affect how the guns sound so if you're in a in a, a sort of empty room there's a lot of reverb and echo bouncing off the you know and it sounds really kind of mad um, if you're in a long uh, street or something like that you hear kind of reverb uh, you know the, the, the guns sound different depending on what environment you're in um, and it's really good uh, and I would totally recommend it uh, as a first person shooter if you've never played it um, go and look at videos or something just go and, go and pick up a copy for somewhere because it's awesome um, so yeah that was black um, <clears throat> got another sort of racer here um, Quantum Redshift now this, again it's an Xbox exclusive, this was pretty much a launch title, or thereabouts, um, and it's a futuristic racer, um, and it was actually done by the team that did Wipeout, so it's very similar to Wipeout. Um, it, it looks amazing on the Xbox, it runs really quickly, and it's just, it is just your sort of anti-gravity Wipeout type racer with weapons. But um, it just, it's so good, you know, techno soundtrack, all the kind of things you would expect, you know, um, fast racing. But there's some really nice touches. There's levels with water in it, and when your kind of pod racer thing flies through the water, it, or if, especially if it lands, it splashes up water onto the camera, and you get kind of water droplets on the camera um, that kind of eventually fade out. But... Uh, you know, there's so many nice wee touches that it was basically a kind of tech, not a tech demo, but it was really designed to show off what the Xbox could do. And it does, I mean, for a, basically a launch title, it's astounding. And um, it just looks fantastic and plays really well. So, totally recommend that. Next up, <clears throat> another racer, an arcade port, this one. Outrun 2. Um... Outrun 2, the arcade game is amazing. It's it's a it's a worthy sequel to the original. Um, you know, it it it's got the same uh, feel as the original Outrun. Um, later versions of Outrun, I think, kind of lost it a little bit and became far too detached from the original. But Outrun 2, the Xbox port looks arcade perfect to me it's you know it's 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 it looks amazing it runs really fast um lots of good options in it i can't remember if it's this one that you can unlock the original side of this one or outrun 2006 that you can actually unlock the original um version of outrun but if you play outrun 2 on the xbox it's just a great fun game but if you play it with a steering wheel, um, it just unlocks a new dimension to it. It just it handles so well. A lot of a lot of games with a steering wheel, I've found that it becomes really kind of floaty when you're driving. You know, you're you're used to that kind of really pinpoint accuracy of the gamepad, and when you use a steering wheel, you you find that you you're you're fighting with yourself. You know, you turn left, then you have to kind of fight to get back to go on a straight, and you you just end up doing this thing. Outrun 2 with a steering wheel just works, it plays like the arcade game, it, the steering is so tight um, and it's great fun and it feels like it should um, and the great thing is you can buy small adapters for the Xbox that let you use um, PlayStation 2 steering wheels on them so even if you don't have an Xbox wheel um, you can get like the Ferrari steering wheel, the Thrustmaster Ferrari wheels that for the PlayStation 2 and use them with the adapter, they all work perfectly. So I would thoroughly recommend Outrun 2 for, for some arcade shenanigans on your Xbox. Um, great stuff. And all the original music there is there as well with the remix versions as well. Crank. Okay, the next game is Mercenaries. Um, now, I'm not really a, an open world gamer kind of guy. I don't like Grand Theft Auto. I've never, never got into them. Um, so that whole open world running about to do stuff never never really kind of floated my boat. I liked the original Grand Theft Auto, the top down drivey thing, but even that I didn't play that much. Anyway, that's, that's a side juncture. 
Mercenaries was the first open world <coughs> game that I really, really liked. Um, you basically, you play your, it's, and I've just noticed it's a LucasArts game. Never, never ever noticed that it's a LucasArts game. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, you basically, you, you run about and um, you can ally yourself to different political factions. Um, so some people will say, you know, we need this guy assassinated and you can go and do that and get money off the, the political faction. Or you can go there and the other faction will say, if you don't assassinate him, we'll give you an extra bonus. But if you go back and kill the first guys, then we'll give you more money. So you can start to play all these factions off against each other. Um, and it's a sort of third person running about sort of Grand Theft Auto-ish, run about, shoot stuff. But you, like Grand Theft Auto, you can get into different vehicles, you can get into tanks, jeeps, um, helicopters, God knows all what. And sometimes you have to steal enemy vehicles to be able to drive over their border. If you drive in a normal thing, they'll shoot the living daylights at you and you'll, you'll die. So you have to kind of use a little bit of strategy, which is really quite clever. Um, and it's it's such a good game. I don't know if this came out before, <coughs> excuse me, before or after. I can't see a date on it. Um, the sort of Grand Theft Auto Three where it went to that third person thing. Um, but Mercenaries is a great game. Um, there was a sequel on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Um, I haven't played that. I've got it, but I haven't played it. Um, but the original is is great fun. Um, it's a, it's a bit brown. It's very brown. Um, because it's, I don't know, I can't remember when it's set, but you know, lots of lots of jungles and kind of uh, sort of warfare-ridden places. So it is very brown, but great game. <coughs> so the next game, uh, more along the violence and destruction route, is Mech Assault. Um, now, again, it's an open-worldy type thing. I was never into the mech games like Battletech and, and Mech Warrior and all that kind of stuff. I was I was never a kind of mech fan. But I picked that up, the Mech Assault. I, I think I paid like two quid for it or something. Um, I can't remember if I played a demo of it or something, but it's such a good game. It's it's kind of arcadey. Uh, you don't need to be a mech fan. You can customise your mechs. You can, you know, bolt bits on. Um, and change your guns and all sorts of things and get, and get new bits and bobs for your for your mech um, which I think mech aficionados really enjoy kind of tweaking their mechs but you can pick it up and play and you can run about and shoot stuff um, and you get missions and things to do in it it looks great, it sounds great um, from memory there's different views that you can have um, but the defaults are sort of third person, a runny, shooty thing. Um, but it's it's such a good game, and it just gets it's just mayhem when you're shooting your uh, your machine gun. I'm I've not played it for years, but I'm pretty sure one triggers your machine gun, and the other one's your kind of special weapon. So you can be running about, and you can independently rotate your turret from your what way, whatever way you're running. So you can be running, shooting behind you, you know, with machine guns, but then firing loads of rockets all over the place, and it's just mayhem and chaos, and it's great fun. Um, brilliant, brilliant fun. Okay, so the next game I would like to talk about is Forza. Get that without the glare. There we go, Forza. Um, <clears throat> this was the first racing game, really. Well, I was going to say first racing game that I played that looked absolutely astounding, that's not true, the Gran Turismo games on the play PlayStation 2 were astounding. Forza, for me, was the first game that really felt like a simulation, um, and that's unkind because I know Gran Turismo is a complete simulation, but I always played Gran Turismo, I never played it in sort of career mode, I always just played it, you know, firing a, a car around a track at high speed. But Forza, I don't know, it felt slightly different. <clears throat> The cars handled really differently depending on what you were driving. Um, and it looked absolutely astounding. Um, so much so that there was one point uh, a few years ago now, but I was playing Forza and I managed to sort of save up enough credits in it to buy an Aston Martin DB9. Um, now that's, that's my fantasy car. You know, if I ever won the lottery, um, I would buy an Aston Martin DB9. 
but I got one in, in Forza. Black, piano black, DB9. And, uh, and I took a photograph of it and posted it on Facebook that, you know, it, it had taken me a while, but I managed to, to eventually buy uh, an Aston Martin DB9. And people were saying, oh, congratulations, it looks amazing. You know, really pleased that you've got it. So the graphics in Forza were realistic enough to convince people that it was a real car that I had bought. <laughs> so it's just, Forza's, I mean, obviously the series is still going. You can, you know, they've just released, I think it's Forza 6, it's on the Xbox One. But Forza, the original Forza, still looks beautiful. It still looks an amazing game. Um, and it sounds brilliant. Uh, you know, it's it's such a good game. Um, so, yeah, Forza was a cracking game. Thoroughly recommend it. Next one I'm going to talk about is another arcade port, or three arcade ports to be precise. Um, and that is Silent Scope Complete. Um, so this is Silent Scope 1, 2 and 3 uh, in one package. Um, in the Silent Scope games, I loved Silent Scope in the arcade. Um, it was a huge machine with a sniper rifle on it. Um, and it was really unique in that you, although you had the monitor, if you tried to play just looking at the monitor, you didn't really do very well because you had to look through the scope of the gun. There was actually a mini TFT monitor in the scope, which was a zoomed in kind of sniper view of, of the game. So, you know, you could see on screen, people could watch what you were aiming at and all that kind of stuff, but you would only actually see the targets properly if you looked through the scope of the gun. It was a really unique mechanic um, to the game. <clears throat> and it was such such great fun in the arcades. Um, and Silent Scope came out, and I remember it, I actually bought it at launch on a PlayStation 2, um, because it came out in the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 2 and all that kind of stuff. And I remember being really disappointed because it didn't support light guns. Um, so you had to use your control pad, which was all right. I mean, the game looked arcade perfect, but it was too sluggish. You know, you needed quick reactions and it was too sluggish. There was a kind of accelerate button that would kind of fly your target about the place. But it was it was too hard to control. Um, and then you had a different button to sort of zoom in on your target and things. And it was just, it was all right, but it wasn't brilliant. But Silent Scope Complete, on the Xbox, um, whilst you can play it with your pad, it also supports, and I might need to sit back a bit for this. And I will, there we go, look, it supports, I can't actually get it in camera, there you go. It supports this absolute behemoth of a light gun. And that is a proper sniper scope. And the great thing about this is, you know, it's it's a, it's an amazing gun. I mean, it feels, it's, it's huge. Um, but the great thing about this is, I'll come back into the camera a little bit, <clears throat> there's actually a um, scope sensitivity. There's all sorts of buttons on this and I'll show you this properly later. But there's a scope sensitivity thing on it because what it actually does is when you're playing the game, so on the PlayStation you pressed a button and it would kind of zoom in and it would give you a zoomed in reticle, uh, like, like you were looking down the scope. And what this does is, I think there's actually a sensor, I can't remember where it is, but basically, when you lean in and look in the scope, it senses that on the screen and the zoomed in bit that you see is in the scope. So it looks like you're looking down the scope um, at the, uh, the sort of zoomed in sniper thing. Um, and it just feels great. There's a proper kickback on it and all that kind of stuff. So it feels really good. And it's it's a quite a weighty gun. Um, and it feels really nice. Um, and it is the official, see if we can see that, silent scope light gun. Um, an Xbox exclusive. And I, if you still have a CRT TV, because obviously it doesn't work on LCDs and all that kind of stuff. If you still have a CRT TV, I would thoroughly recommend it because it's, it's, it's a totally unique exclusive way. You can only play it this way on the Xbox or if you have the arcade machine. Um, but for that proper arcade experience you know get yourself a 32 inch CRT telly and uh, and sit with that and just play away it's it's fantastic um, and the silent scope rifle has the bonus of uh, and this this is just a bonus game House of the Dead 3 um, the full arcade port um, so this supports that gun 
Um, this has also got House of the Dead 2 on it. You can unlock House of the Dead 2. The cool thing about this gun is that I should really have transformers noises here, but you can take that off. You can take that bit off. I really feel like I should put this in a guitar case or something, you know, because it is like that. But anyway, when you take it apart, you basically get this bit, the stock. But it's a shotgun. So you have the shotgun reload, or whatever. But if you're playing House of the Dead 3 in the arcade, it had a, it had a shotgun. So you can play properly, bang bang, and reload like you did in the arcade. So you get the House of the Dead 3 arcade experience with the proper gun. You know, you can put the, the shoulder stock back in it if you want that thing. But it just feels great playing it with this. It feels like it should. Let me put this down here. Anyway, House of the Dead 3 and Silent Scope on the, on the Xbox. Fantastic. So, <clears throat> moving on, we've got a, another racer here. Project Gotham. Well, precisely, Project Gotham Racing 2. Um, this was... The kind of spiritual successor to, um, oh my god, what's it called? Metropolis Street Racer on the Dreamcast. Um, MSR looked fantastic on the Dreamcast and it, it, it had the, the kudos system. So you got kudos for doing drifts and, and kind of clean driving laps and all that kind of stuff. So that, that basically became Project Gotham on the Xbox. And Project Gotham looked fantastic played really well but it was an arcade racer pure arcade racer um which was fantastic project gotham 2 and the reason i picked project gotham 2 is that you can race around edinburgh they basically uh went and took photographs of loads of places and i can't remember where else uh chicago washington edinburgh stockholm moscow yokohama so they basically went around lots of kind of major cities and, you know, before Google Maps did it, took thousands and thousands and thousands of digital photos and kind of stitched them all together um, to make these photorealistic texture mapped uh, environments. So it's great because you can basically race around Edinburgh, Princess Street in the mid-90s. When I can't remember when this was released. Uh, I can never find dates on these things when I'm looking for them. Uh, did it, uh, oh, I have no idea. 2003. So you can basically race around Edinburgh as it was in sort of early 2000s. Um, and there are shops there that are no longer uh, no longer there. So it's, it's quite bizarre. It's like racing a time machine. Um, but anyway, Project Gotham 2 was brilliant. And there were Xbox Live features on it. You could race online multiplayer. But you could, <coughs> excuse me, you could also download new tracks. Um, I can't remember if you could get new cars, but you could certainly download new tracks. Um, and I managed to download them before they shut down the Xbox Live servers. Um, so I actually have the extra maps. I think it's like Paris and stuff like that. I can't remember. But um, but it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, PGR2. In fact, the Project Gotham Racing Series. It, it, I don't know if it's still going. It certainly was up to was it PGR4 or 5 on the Xbox 360. But um, great racing series. Great, great fun. Uh, the next game is one that I got at launch. And that's Rocky. Um, I love Sylvester Stallone. And I love the Rocky films. And when I got Rocky on the Xbox... Now put it into perspective, and I'm going to do my spending a fortnight looking for a date here. 2002. Um, back in 2002, if you think what graphics were like, uh, you know, now we're used to photorealistic everything, but back then, that looked like Rocky. It looked like you were playing the video, the film. Um, which sounds really silly to say it now, because obviously it's the, the graphics are fairly simple, but the the rendering of Rocky and Clubber Lang and Ivan Drago and all these other guys, it just looked amazing, and it played so well. Um, you know, it's it's kind of arcadey. Uh, it's it's certainly not a, a simulation by any means, um, but it was just great fun. Um, and the music and the kind of over the top rockiness of it all. Um, 
and it's it's a staple that comes out if I'm having games nights. My my, my pals and I still play Rocky to this day um, because it's just such good fun. Um, you can play it tactically. You can try and play it like a proper boxing game, um, or you can just button bash, which is what my mates do. You can just button bash and uh, and see what happens. Um, but it's great fun. Um, and I totally recommend it. There, there was a sort of sequel, Rocky Legends, which had a slightly updated engine in it. Um, and there is one cool thing about the Rocky Legends, and that is that it plays the kind of... Uh, oh, what was the music? It's not I the... It kind of plays I the Tiger, but um, the kind of inspirational music for Rocky. Um, has it gonna fly now, I think it's called? My brain's chunked on the way here trying to remember what it's called. I think it's gonna I think it's called Gonna Fly Now. Anyway, um that music as you're kinda getting a little bit if you've been sort of beaten and you're you know, you're you're edging towards the end of your energy and you manage to make a comeback, that music kinda comes in like it does in the movie. <laughs> um so you end up getting Rocky's comeback and it inspires it's really bizarre because it really inspires you to pummel those buttons harder, you know, and you end up do making a proper Rocky comeback, you know, where you've been on the ropes about to kind of give up and you make a comeback and that music just swells up and it's just such a nice wee touch. So the original Rocky game is fantastic, Rocky Legends is also great, um, both easily available to pick up for, for not a lot of money, so thoroughly recommend that if you want a a, a slightly more arcadey boxing game. Um, that's if you imagine Ready to Rumble boxing as pure cartoon boxing, that's a, a great game. Then you've got Rocky for the kind of split between cartoony and realistic boxing, and then you would move up to like the Fight Night series, uh, the Electronic Arts ones, um, which are really good as well. But those are sort of simulation -y. So Rocky sits right in the middle of that nice kind of cartoony, arcadey, but slightly simulation type boxing game. Anyway, thoroughly recommend it. And the last game that I've got here, everybody knows this, Halo. Um, Halo was the reason I wanted an Xbox. And I won't tell you the story just now, I'll tell you that in the Retro Gaming Memories Xbox edition. Um, but Halo, I remember playing it and that was the first time I'd experienced Xbox. And it was just such a good game. My God, um, I remember playing it, running about and shooting stuff and then getting in this Jeep with a machine gun on the back of it and playing with your pals and one of you could drive it and one of you had the gun, jumping in the back of the Warthog um, and driving about and just causing destruction and mayhem and it just, it looked astounding, it looked absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's such a good game, and my, my pal and I sunk many, many, many hours into, into Halo. I've never completed it, um, even though, it, I think it was it 2001 this came out. I'm going to chat amongst yourselves while I find the date again. 2002. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so two, 15 years ago that came out, and I've still never completed it. <laughs> I think we got quite near the end, but uh, still never completed it, but still, <clears throat> such a good game. Um, and if you've never seen Halo again, where have you been? Um, but go and, get, go and pick up a copy of Halo and just play it. It's such a good game. You, they remastered it for the Xbox 360, um, so they had the original Halo with HD graphics. Um, I think it was the Master Chief Collection or something it was called. You don't need it, you know, it's all very nice and all that, but the original Halo looks astounding, it just looks beautiful, um, even though it's a 15 year old game. Um, you know, thoroughly recommend it, go and pick it up, go and play it, great game. Anyway, that's me waffled enough. Um, that was just, how many is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 14. Xbox games, so not quite a top 10, a top 14 um, of my Xbox games. These are the games that I enjoy, you know, the, the kind of staples that I, that I love to pick up and play. So um, anyway, yeah, that, that's going to do it for this one. So thanks for watching and, uh, and like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, you know the score, and, uh, and I'll see you next time.